Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome all you guys tonight to the uh, illustrious College of Complexes tonight. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we will have um, a brief announcements uh, where Charlie and members of the audience can talk about upcoming events. Second, we'll have a uh, speaker will speak. Then third, we'll have questions and answers. The fourth will be our infamous rebuttal period where we uh, have our rebuttals. We go to generally about 8.30, 8.45, I mean 7.30, 7.45 because the restaurant closes at eight. And uh, during the uh, presentation, all those on Zoom we are requested to mute themselves uh, during the time so that we can have a clear presentation. Tim Mike's uh, presentations is Mike uh, Layman is going to be doing a uh, little bit on the trains and plants in London. The college of complex consists of the, there's two rules at the college. One is one pool at a time, and two is no personal attacks. Again, my name is Tim. I'll be moderating tonight. So, Charlie, when you're ready with the announcements, go ahead and take it away. All right. Welcome, everybody, to meeting number 3,718. Uh, the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. As usual, I will begin by making an advertisement for our meetup group, email group. And we also have a Google email group. And there's instructions on the center top of our website um, uh, in, to join all these. It takes less than a minute. And you'll get one or two notices, that's all, uh, each week regarding the upcoming topics. And as Tim iterated, will everyone please online put an X over the microphone, at least during the presentation. And we uh, request everyone in attendance in person to please contain their conversations, at hey. least during the presentation. Thank you for your cooperation in this regard. Now, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. We've got seven of them. Uh, June the 3rd, I'm hearing some noise there from the audience. Please, please, let's eliminate the, the secondary sound. Thank you. Uh, June the 3rd. We're going to have an author of an eco book. He has extensive credentials in the environmental uh, uh, world. And he's going to be talking about a book he wrote, and it concerns violent and nonviolent movement uh, regarding climate change. Um, so, Charles will be here. Um, uh, on, uh, Chuck Collins on June the 3rd. On uh, June the 10th, our own Henrik, uh, who has uh, written uh, many articles on foreign affairs, at least 10 articles on the Ukraine and other topics. We'll be here on June the 10th uh, to discuss, we're going to have a Ukraine uh, update. So June the 10th. On uh, June 17th, our own Andy Anderson will be talking about censored subjects, I presume. He's going to bring us up to date on something that he hasn't discussed before on censored news um, on June the 17th. On June the 24th, we have an academic, uh, Dr. McPherson, uh, is going to be talking about well, how, what we, how should we respond either as an individual or as a community to global warming. That's on the on the 24th of June. Should be a good evening. On July the 1st, yours truly, Charles Paydock. Now all of you have seen one time or other uh, these historical markers. In conjunction with the 4th of July, I've come up with a list of what I think are the 10 most important historical sites in the United States. And everyone will be allowed 
are expected to nominate one site or more that they think uh, should be added to the list. So that's July 1st. On July 8th, no other is the 4th of July program number two. No other than George Washington himself. He'll be visiting the College of Complexes. <laughs> so if you want to know all about what happened in Philadelphia and elsewhere, he'll be here and you can ask him if he really did chop down the cherry tree and, and fess up to it. So that's on July the 8th. On July 5th, on June, on July 15th, we're going to try something new. We have a radio recording of a letter written by Frederick Douglass on the 10th anniversary of his uh, being, being liberated from slavery. And he wrote a letter to his former slave owner. So we're going to open it up to discussion. We listen to it. It's only about a 20 minute radio broadcast. And then I've got some questions prepared. That leaves open July 22nd and 29th. Uh, if you'd like to uh, make a presentation. One other thing, this coming Thursday, I'll be talking at our other satellite campus at six o'clock on Thursday on what is the progress, what was the progressive movement okay, and how does it relate to today? today? So <laughs> that's this Thursday at six o'clock. Okay, Tim, thank you very much. Take it away. All right, we just want to one highlight real quick. Uh, our sister campus Dallas, as Charlie alluded to, meets on Thursdays and it, uh, Charlie will be speaking on the, uh, Ju on Thursday, June 1st. And then they'll have, uh, they got openings on June 8th. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Lehman, if you're ready, uh, get up there and we'll uh, start your presentation. Um, get in, get behind there the screen. Are. Yeah, right there. And you can, can you see the screen really readily? Yeah, but if you know if I want to do this thing, then I know. Well, we'll we'll work with you if you need to do that. Okay. But right. uh, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna adjust this down a little can bit. Do the full screen or the, yeah, that. we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get a full screen on it in just a second, okay? All right, everybody, let's introduce Mr. Mike Lehman tonight. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Your screen's right. yours. Okay. Thanks for everybody for coming. Big crowd tonight. <laughs> anyway, so this is gonna be just a quick little idea of how people get around in Europe mainly France and possibly London if we have time. So this is one person's uh, trip you know, trip from London, taking the Euro uh, buses, trains in London, and then uh, getting over on the Euro, Euro rail bullet train to Paris, and then getting around Paris a little bit, and the stations there, and then going on down to the Mediterranean, Marseille, uh, which has its own subway. Subway and um, tram system and bus system and you know how it from a street level view. This is this is my uh, trip. Yeah, hang on, and I'll explain now. Well, there's some aspects here of uh, oil use and safety and transportation and uh, development of the cities and. Um, Okay, Mike, we got it. We're all set when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Go to the next one. I'll just hold it. Yeah. Okay, first one will be. Oh, I'm going to just yell silence. Okay, Mike. Feel like you're mad. Yeah, no, just just grab. Yeah, you just just. Okay, go ahead. To the next one. All right. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Right. Yeah, I know. There we go. Okay, here's the URL from Paris to London. Go ahead. Ooh. That's ah. a bit of a little. Bit. Oh, use the microphone, please. I just use the microphone. Go ahead, go ahead. That's the side. That's the typical diner food like Amtrak. Go ahead. Eurostar made by Siemens. Okay. Louder, go Mike. Ahead. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. That's inside the train station at Paris in Paris as you get off. From London to Paris on the year rail. Very nice. Bullet train. Go ahead. 
I know I'm gonna get married. Are these electric trains? Yeah, everything's electric here. They don't use uh, diesel or steam or anything unless it's certain. Little certain branch lines. Apply. Little branch lines. Russ is my thermodynamics and non thermodynamics expert. <laughs> okay. But yeah, they don't, most of this is electric, whereas in America, everything's going to be pretty much diesel. Well, except for some DAs, an essential route. But there are some electrics. Most of this, most of Europe is electric. Go ahead. That's again inside the Paris station. Go ahead. That's the main of this. <laughs> this is the transit system for France. SNCF, they handle, I think, everything subways, trams, regional trains. But here's some of the cities you can get to from the train station. But some more Normandy, you know, uh, where I was going was. Uh, well, let's say, I think that's one of the stations. Go ahead. This is the part of the station. This is the, this is the station that Bonet painted those. Speak into the microphone. Yes, Mike, please pick up the microphone and use the microphone. Which one? That's the mic, that one. Yeah, that one right there. Okay, so this is the station where Monet did all those famous paintings with locomotives. Go ahead. Another photo of that. Go ahead. Another photo of it. This is the street scene of Paris, where it's mostly pedestrian and very narrow streets and medieval streets. Go ahead. This is another station. This is the station just east of Gare Nord, which will have bullet train service, usual service, theater service. Go ahead. And this is inside that train shed, they call it. Go ahead. What? Yes. Yes. There's four major old historic beautiful stations in probably more, but the main four are Garden Nord, which means north, Garden Est, which means east, Garlazar, which is that Monet station that kind of handles trains that go uh, to the west of Paris. And then Garleone goes south. That's the one I took to go south to Marseille. And that's uh, the, that's the first TGV line that opened in 2000, and, uh, excuse me, 1980, 82. So we'll be going, going to that too. Go ahead. This is inside the past, I think. Go ahead. It's a nice old World War II painting. Star S, go ahead. This is a very impressive view walking into the Star S. Okay, huge. Go ahead. Yeah, Star S. I have all the super signs. But they're, they're great looking station inside and out. Lots and lots of retail. Uh, I think Union Station in Chicago, I think it's lots more in retail, but there's some more activity now. And uh, Northwestern Station in Chicago really has to upgrade and lighten up. It's a shame that Northwestern Station in Chicago. Go ahead. There's another view. Go ahead. You know, you know, this was just a random photo. And here's a lady, like, dressed to the night. You can tell this is Paris. <laughs> She's on a bicycle. I just took this shot to get a look at a bus stop, uh, bus stop in a street just in November, December, just to go look at a street view. And she shows up in my photo. And I'm like, damn, she was pretty stylish for a bike, but it's Paris, you know, it's the culture capital of the world. So I guess she just you got you dressed up like that when you're in Paris. Go ahead. This is, uh, so this is the one that will. Okay, this is this, oh, this is north. This is the station that connects to London. Uh, we, I left that a St. Pancras station. That's our bullet train station to get underneath the English Channel to Paris. Go ahead. We end up here. Here's the famous subway. 
metro of Paris. Go ahead. So that's electric also. Electric, all electric in here. All electric in here. No oil. Very clean. People like sit and go for tea and coffee right next to the locomotives because there's no smoke. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead. This is the, again, the entrance. We have one of these in Chicago. But it's just the street behind the uh, that entrance, the subway. But that's looking along like the east west school uh, with the car more. Go ahead. That's their biggest station. This is an enormous station. Go ahead. This is the train that goes up to Amsterdam. This is a bullet train. It likes color. I took this once from Brussels to Paris. Uh, this is the one that goes up to Brussels and Amsterdam, maybe somewhere else. It stays on the continent of Europe. All electric. You see the cat there. Was there a cat in the catenary? There is cats in the catenary. It's in the cradle. Uh, but never mind, I know. <laughs> Here's another, we go. That's, that's the private sector for TGP bullet trains. So they have private sector trains. I think we're in Saint, we're, we're in Marseille here. <laughs> I didn't get many photos on the TGP. It was too fast. Okay, go ahead. No, we're still in Paris. Oh, oh. Oh, keep going. Oh, the other way. Other way. There we go. Oh no, we're still okay. This is the fourth station. Yeah, this is the fourth one we're visiting. So this is Garland. You know, this is how you take bullet train cut down south of Marseille to the Mediterranean. Go ahead. Or the other way. Sorry, Garland. You know, we stop at the town of Lyon. And here's your private sector, another private sector. You stop stirring your tea, man. That was me. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> okay, so this is the TGB going on down to Marseille. Bullet train. These will hold a thousand people. So that's like three Boeing 747s worth of people per trip. Okay. And a 747 that went down to Marseille would probably burn about 20,000 gallons of gasoline. Dead fuel. And this thing will build, burn nothing. In fact, it won't even burn anything because it probably uses nuclear. It's electric, isn't it? Yeah, but everything's no, electric. Uh, no, so it's burning uranium. It's burning uranium. I was corrected by my thermodynamics expert. Or okay, go ahead. <laughs> Which is a thermal? Here's the speed. Andy can convert. Who can convert? Uh, who can convert? Kilometer kilometers per hour to miles per hour. Yes. So here's how fast we're going from Paris to Marseille. That is almost 200. So we're going 200 miles per hour. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Tim. I think we're in Marseille. Go ahead. It's just the interior news of the bullet train. Now I think we're in Marseille. So this is right on the Mediterranean. Uh, Barcelona is 200 miles to the west. You know, Italy will be 200 miles to the east, which there are trains from the station that go to those countries. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, here we are in Marseille, France. Beautiful Marseille. The oldest city in France. This city is 2,000 years old. <laughs> That's old. Julius Caesar lived here. <laughs> Julius Caesar went to wars here. All right, so it's our main station. This is Notre Dame of Marseille, France. And I was talking to the guitar dude, and it's a view of Marseille, France from this train station. Go ahead. Another view from the train station. This is the metro. So I would take a metro from the Marseille, the St. Charles station there in Marseille. I took a metro subway to this station. This is the port of Marseille and the old historic area and where Julius Caesar used to hang out with his boats. And so this is how I came, came off and then went to my hotel. 
uh, it was a Best Western hotel. Go figure, American <laughs> hotel, but it was okay. Here's the street. I think that's my. Okay, so here's a tram. That's all electric. Well, so in Chicago, that would be like our bus would be burning oil. But here, this is one couple of their main tram lines. Dedicated right away. Huh? Yeah, kind of like streetcars, trams, light rail. Uh, they walk around, all, uh, they kind of wiggle all around. But they're kind of nice because they always get the priority on the street. They go in front of cars, they go in, you know, they get their own stoplights. Um, and then they have little streets here for cars. <laughs> so this, this, this is like the main transport mode. Uh, for for a lot of European cities, I like trams. They're pretty cool. And they, and they hold a lot of people. Here's my best Western, right there. <laughs> so I stayed right here. No, I stayed like right here. <laughs> I had a little balcony, and I had the trams coming by. Go ahead. It was pretty pretty cheap. So this is the entrance to the port. We'll have a few pictures of that. There's there's Marseille. So my hotel was back here. That tramway, they have like three, four tra tram lines back here. It's a city about the size of Milwaukee. Here's some of your uh, other transportation. Uh, these are burning oil, probably, and all these are. <laughs> Gasoline, diesel. Mm -hmm. Gasoline, diesel. Oh. oh. There's been more of a twist of diesel. This is an old 2000 year old uh, port that guarded this port. The port's kind of like a U shape. Go ahead. Another shot of the port. Here's this one side. Here's another side. It was bombed by the Germans or Americans during WW2. I believe the Americans. I think the Americans bombed the city. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And that's a better. I was at staying at. I, I had dinner one of my last nights here at uh, Hotel Sapatel. It just had a really nice view of the port. So I was staying back here, a couple blocks off the port. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Another view. Go ahead. Here's the bus. One of the buses I took along the Mediterranean. I took it. City buses. <laughs> you know, if, if you know how to get around Chicago with. Petro and Petra and CTA and buses. It's pretty much the same deal. The fares are a little different when you go to a, um, you know, a European city and we can do our gasoline leader conversion. Us, four of those make a gallon. Yeah, four, it's about four. six, seven dollars a gallon. This well, is a fancy time, neighborhood. The time you went there. Actually, the euro and the dollar were, were almost equal. Very. So yeah, so like you know, seven dollars a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> we were probably about four dollars a gallon at that time, maybe four and a half. It was still near the you know pandemic. Okay, so this is a kind of fancy neighborhood. Let's go ahead to this is the South Hotel. Chicago has a South Hotel, French chain. So that's where I had the views. So I went up, I was lucky. I went up to the rooftop deck. We all love the rooftop decks these days. And they had a nice uh, charcuterie. Am I saying that right? It was my French girl. Charcuterie? Ah, look at that. I took one French class <laughs> and I gave up. <laughs> I'm French. Anyway, so I was lucky. I was up here somewhere and I had that nice view of the port. Per se. Okay, go ahead. And it was Christmas, it's getting to be Christmas time. Those, that's how the French decorated it. Go ahead. It was nice. Wow. Go ahead. And that's my charcuterie. <laughs> it was pretty good. You know, everything tastes better in France for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> but even McDonald's tasted better. It's like, damn, it feels, tastes like real food. So yeah, there's some meats and cheeses and nuts and still water. Okay, uh, there's a red boat. 
This is kind of long, a little bit of trick. Go ahead. That's a, a, one of our American wars. They talk about America somewhere here. Just can't remember that well. Anyway, that's the, the French um, a memorial for World War I, I hope. Oh, I should do some more. Uh, 1938. Premier Armistice Army of, of the Orient, all uh, heroes de la army, des Guerres Montaigne, the era, our heroes of the Eastern War. I don't know, Mike. It's era, don't know French, right? Okay, go ahead. Here's the bus ride I took. So my hotel, my best Western's here. So I took a city bus. I would recommend anybody take a city bus. Just look at a map and go, oh, that's a nice route. <laughs> and take it. I, I enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed taking this route, the number 83. Chicago probably has an 83. I took a 152 here. It is 152, right? The Edison bus. So anyway, so here I am in Marseille. I walked all the way down to this fort that protected Julius Caesar down here. And then I was staying here and then I took a city bus. This is kind of nice here. And then they had some beach and Chicago beaches are nice here. <laughs> and then I walked back. And then I ended up at that South Capel, like right here. Okay. There's another there's a passenger mode, passenger ship mode. Just taking different modes, pictures. I didn't have a lot of bus pictures. I have more bus pictures than one. That's out in the Mediterranean. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very nice picture. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's more of a picture show. Sorry. But um, this is walking back along the bus route. Go ahead. A sign on the street for that same bus route. Go ahead. Well, a similar bus. Go ahead. There's an hundred. Hey, that's a postcard. Senorita, that's a calendar. Bro, uh, oh, how do you see this lady? Animals. Oh my God. There, I took this picture for you. It's a Mediterranean. Mademoiselle. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a Mediterranean. There's a couple of people in out there. Go well, ahead. Mark, Mark, Go ahead. There's another shot similar. So I walked up along there. That's looking in the ravines that go back up the French ravines that go into the Mediterranean. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a beach. I think uh, fishing beaches are much nicer. <laughs> they are much nicer. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like this building that's right on the corner of one of those uh, the ports, by the intersection. Lots of people on these things. Lopez. Scooter, Lopez, EV, lots, lots of that Lopez. stuff. And a decent fair amount of ET lanes, bike lanes, slash. Go ahead. That's just a uh, chocolate shop in France. Go ahead. So this is my hotel's back here. This is the bus station. Go ahead. <coughs> you know, France, they have much better, you can't see it real well here. Uh, they have much better labeling of the food. So they, they're they're a little more truthful on what's going into your body. Whereas in Mar America, we have like garbage and poisons and chemicals. Go ahead. And they're a little more concerned about sustainability Every who buys blueberries here. Okay, so this is cardboard. This is bamboo, a spoon. These are just some things I can buy. Right? Now, I would go to grocery stores. I didn't, I didn't want to challenge myself at restaurants. Of course, it was bamboo. So the bamboo, the cups are bamboo. It's bamboo. This is 94% less plastic. 
and we all know we should be using less plastic. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Frank. What? All right, Frank. Okay. Here's the here's the uh, crank. Here's the uh, analogy next to my Gus Western. Uh, that's just a lot of work. That's just a cafe. Yeah, so go ahead. They were even worried about Kiev and France. Go ahead. This is of another rooftop. So that's Marseille. And then the streetcar line is down here. There's an EV. So your electronic EVs and bikes can use tram, see, tram right away. So even though it's a dedicated train line, tram, streetcar, light rail, whatever you want to call it, these are the sidewalks. This is the mini street for dirty, stinky cars. And then here's your tram right away. But, but, but bikes and EVs and God knows what else can go on that legally. So that's good. There's a bunch of modes here. Okay. All right, Tim, go ahead. There's the moon. Very There's nice. Here's my little awesome photography. You liked it? Yeah. I did that with this thing. It looks professional. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. It this looks very good. nice. I, I took some good smart. ones. Like, yeah, so, there's some stinker. So hey, half of them. I, I, wait, so the, the dedicated lane, the bike, is just for bikes and trams? Okay, what? so what I'm experiencing, you know, all trends start in Europe, right? All trends. Okay, so, well, okay, here's another view of it. Go back one, would you? So, this is the street. This is the sidewalk. This is the tram. Like these guys, people would get run over. But the tram goes slow enough that, you know, they're like a bus. They think they watch out. So, this is the tram right away. And then here's the sidewalk again. So, on this right here, you have to have bikes, wheelchairs, scooters, um, powered bikes electric, whatever, and you'd have trams. And this is a major street, one of the major streets that have the trams, and you'd have five minute service on the trams. That's pretty damn good. I mean, my Edison bus is every 15 minutes or longer. So you follow me, there's all, you know, so they're using other modes on the tram mode. Go ahead, Tim. Oh, I went to look for a guitar store and it was closed, but it was a nice street scene. Go ahead. This is the train station by, this is a metro. So they have a subway. They had like four, four subway lines or like four tram lines. So this is an old, you know, they got a statue up front. It's France, of course. <clears throat> so the subway is here. I, I, it's, it's original use of this building is something else. And then the tram was back out. Okay, go ahead. The other way. That's another street scene. Here's a tram. There's a tram that went to the line. It's kind of like a cross. And then they have another line. It's not a real big city. It seemed like it was a big city, but it's like the size of, of, of Milwaukee. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Here's my bus station. So they had a lot of bus connections here. I think the buses were all, I should have done a better job. But my French is not that good. I think they were all diesel, but maybe not. Okay, I should have researched that. But anyway, this is a pretty good in and out station for buses. And I think my Mediterranean bus even went here, 83. Stopped here. I forgot where I caught it. I think I caught it over by the port. I then went along the Mediterranean. But it was this night. This is right across from my hotel, a bus, a bus port. Okay, here's uh, the side of the port on the north end. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's a tramway with our catenary. And here's our tram. You know, not the, not the prettiest thing for France, but that thing's holding a lot of people. There, of course, I was standing in them. Uh, there might have been 500,000 people. Yeah, good. 
So they hold a lot of people. Pretty good service, and you know nothing got in their way. Uh, they would, you know, cars would have to share it, share the right of way. Yeah. But you can see it's dedicated. It's dedicated right here. Okay, go ahead. And that was my view of that intersection from above. Go ahead. And that's from way above. But it's that same intersection. Go ahead. And I was just walking up the hill area next to the port. Go ahead. 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 Uh, this is just some bus mapping. I should have probably went up to that Notre Dame Cathedral because it was up high on the hill. But I kind of want to run out of time. If I was up here, I probably could have caught the number 60. Notre Dame Cathedral. I don't know if it's but I did. Okay, go ahead. Or again, uh, it's at uh, 83. Go ahead. Go ahead. Might not have the best order here. <laughs> okay, there's that Notre Dame. And there's the port. Go ahead. Uh, that's along the port. Lots of cafes, lots of coffee. Okay, go ahead. I like this building too, or not. And here's the tramway. I've been staying down here. It rained pretty well. Go ahead. It's a part of soap. That's <laughs> kind of interesting. Is there a hand? Are you going to steal it? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, but you know, you just rub your hand on it. You got some soap. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about a soap dish, I guess. Here's in front of my hotel, bi directional tramway, and there electric. Need to repair some brick. Go ahead. There's our tram. They're all the same and kind of ugly. Uh, we're Bombardier, I think. <clears throat> My hotel, I do share. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tramways. Yeah, so the direction of the tram van to uh, buses. Buses. So it's, yeah, well, uh, our signage is good. Go ahead. Uh, it's, go ahead. That's just another. There, that's a bamboo that's at McDonald's. Right oh. on the port. <laughs> yeah, that was a bamboo cup with a bamboo spoon. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, America goes out like 10 million of these every day in plastic. Why is it McDonald's converted? Probably because they make a penny more, some kind of goofy reason. But that's America. And that's all on the port. Go ahead. Go ahead, some more port scene. That's their opera house in Marseille. Go ahead. Street scene. Go ahead. And nice view of the city. Go ahead. Dark Notre Dame. Go ahead. Oh, there's that station again. With the, I don't know why it's this tram, but the tram is nearby. It's like a block away. And that's the metro. I guess it's a decent connection to the metro and the tram. Go ahead. Go ahead. My tram going down the street where I was on the rooftop. Go ahead. And uh, my degree most highly recommended. Go ahead. Now we're back at the station. Uh, so, you know, so here, I'm going to go. I'll probably go here next January. So I'll go down to Paris, down to Marseille, and then take this train to Nice. Or Genoa. I don't know if there's a Genoa hit all he wants, but I think it goes. But anyway, so this is when when you go down to Marseille, they have other connecting trains. They're not public trains, but they're regional trains. And some of these still go pretty darn fast. Lyon, Nice, Avignon. Okay, go ahead. And that's my time. I think that's when I'm getting ready to go back to Paris. Go ahead. That's the ticket counter for train tickets. They call it Boutique. Go ahead. Uh, 
oh, here's a, here's the port, here's what Julius Caesar, they, they uncovered this, and they determined that this is where Julius Caesar and his port connected, a little port connected to the big port. So they're exca excavating it, so archaeological uh, restoration. Go ahead. So here's the port, like you see the U shape. And I was staying over here, so they determined with the, uh, the digging that this right here that was connected to the port. The Julius Caesar used to hang out here. Go ahead. And in here, these are for uh, these are like imitation boats, just for uh, decoration or kids. Yeah, just for you know to show what. How it would have been operating. Go ahead. That's another view of the area. Go ahead. Or it's kind of neat. That's where Julia suits are heading out. Go ahead. Pizza is the same with France. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Is that the tram? Hitting a bicycle is. Yes. Go ahead. It's got rainy a couple of days. That's what the bus stop looks like. Actually, that's a tram stop. Looks like a bus stop. Here, this guy does not want to be photographed, right? It's a whole different world. People do not want to get photographed. Are the buses electric? I know. I didn't <laughs> check that. I don't remember. But I could probably find that. But people all the time ducked out of the way when you're taking pictures. It's so funny because it's just it's just you know I was taking pictures of infrastructure and cops in France don't, don't they don't screw around they walk around with assault weapons. I was like really impressed. I'm like well, that's cool. I like the cops in France. <laughs> we're chicken. We're chicken. They have cops having assault weapons. The only time I ever see them is like oh spark. I was like, Cubs Park for the games. Huh. And I'm like, man, I would love to see walk uh, cops walking around with a salt that's out here at, Tar at Target. Hey, you could knock somebody off from what, two blocks away? Yeah. <laughs> a gun, you're only going to be able to. Why were they using assault? I mean, why did they have assault weapons? Crime. Terrorists. Yeah. It happens in France. It happens here. We have lots of domestic terrorists here of all colors, Your of all races. Terrorists way before we did. Yeah. No. Yeah, it, it's a, this, is a, this is a dangerous world. America is so much more dangerous now. We have a Remember billion, the have a billion guns. All right. The IRA. Go ahead. So, yeah, and that's a view from my. Uh, my little balcony. Go ahead. There's a tram line. There's the tram. I like one bell. I would hear it like every five minutes. Go ahead. I hit a mall across the street too. That was kind of nice. Go ahead. That's looking the other way. With the tram line. Go ahead. Nice big wide sidewalk. So yeah, again, sidewalks, tramway, multiple use, police also. Another sidewalk and then for cars. That's how Michigan Avenue should be. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. It's right from my balcony. Go ahead. Parts of ski shops, cafes. They have a Christmas market just like we have here. Go ahead. That's looking from the port ground level. Very nice. Very nice. Did that come out okay? Yeah, yes. madam. Okay, so yeah, that's the port. That's the very northern end, and that was a kid with his father fishing or something. Go ahead. That was right about here. Yeah. And my hotel was right here. So here's the tram lines. That's the tram, the yellow, the green, and then this orange. I didn't take this orange one. That means the bus line. Go ahead. Tram, go ahead. There's a nice close up of the tram. Who knows what RTM stands for? RTM. I don't know. 
And then here's a whole system. Well, here's here's my hotel. So this is the tram, and there's another tram, or that might be the subway. But there's like four lines: subway and tram. Go ahead. Another map. Go ahead. It's back to St. Charles Station. Go ahead. That's now I'm going back to Paris. Go ahead. There's our bullet train. It's all electric. They hold a thousand people each. Go ahead. Inside the bullet train. Those look very comfortable. They were this is like airplane seats. Here's in my uh, the Gar du uh, Lyon. So that's where the bullet train went from Marseille to Paris. Go ahead. There we are. Get it off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very busy stations. Look at how busy. These have like 120 million passengers a year, these stations. O'Hare only has 80 million passengers a year pass through it. There are wow. people, you know how this is the car culture in this country? There are people's lives revolve around all these trains in France. Bullet trains, regional trains, commuter trains, metro trains, tram trains. I was shocked. And I thought I knew you know how a train culture versus a car culture was. I didn't I had to see it firsthand. Look at all these people. And that wasn't even a holiday, it was just like a normal day. Go ahead. That's the our huh? I don't see the people. You didn't see it? Go back. Look at all these people. Well, you can't really see them. But that's all you have to hear there. Yeah, I'll, you'll see um, them. Go ahead, Cindy. That's outside. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's just uh, here's some of the okay. So here's the same. Here's the Marseille train, Lyon, Nice, up to Dion, which is near uh, Spain, Zurich, Lyon, Marseille, Grenoble, France. So you get a bunch of places. Go ahead. Here's my train, and I got off before half the people. Look at how many people are on this train. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was above thy level. So this thing went 200 miles per hour from Marseille to Paris with a thousand people on electricity, burning no oil or coal. Just your uranium two thirty five. Better be your better. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be maybe, uranium two thirty three before long. Yeah, maybe thorium someday. Yeah. But anyway, that's, look at that. that's they probably have 20 trains a day like that. <coughs> or stays a good uh, southern uh, hub for bullet trains. Okay, so this is Gar Nord that I'm going to get back on here and go back to London. That's my airport. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's a nice view. So here's the bullet trains are over here. <clears throat> they go to Brussels, Amsterdam, London, and then these are more of the regional. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think I took a long one. Anyway, so here's your bullet train system, <clears throat> which I think is a really nice map because it shows you the frequencies. See, so, there's a lot of trains that go. Here's Lyon, here's Marseille, and that's Italy. And they got a lot that goes to Strasbourg. And then here's your Eurostar going to through the, through the channel, right? Yeah, underneath the channel. Right. They're building a new base tunnel before going into Italy. Through the Alps? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're doing all kinds of cool stuff. And so here's a nice map off of it, uh, Google, and the red ones are the 300 kilometer per hour, and then the purple ones are real fast ones. Now, Spain has a, a good amount of connected fast ones. This year, I also went to Valencia, Granada, Conte, 
And then Italy kind of sporadic. They have little chunks and same with Germany, They're just little slices. But your 200 mile per hour trains are pretty much here. Here. Go ahead. That might be it. Okay, here's the stations I visited. So here's your, you know, this is where everybody goes. Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame. What else? Chamonite. 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 Move. That's all here. I didn't see any. <laughs> I just go to train station. So here's your guards off the tour. That's out of the street. Out of Plaza. Here's the one that goes to London. Here's the one that goes out east. I went, we hung out in it. It's a nice painting. There's one that goes south of Marseille. I didn't make it to this one. But anyway, this is Paris. Go ahead. And there's another nice shot of the station. That might be it, right? Oh, there's Chicago. <laughs> Who can guess that intersection? That's, I know that's on Michigan Avenue somewhere. Very right? good. Uh, about a block north of Congress, I think. Very good, Tim. What do you get around? Is that near the horse? Yeah. The horses. Can you, can, you, can you catch the Ravenswood from there? You can catch the Illinois Central going south. You can catch the South Shore going out to South Bend, Michigan City. And I think you can catch the electrics going out to Blue Island. And South Chicago. And South Chicago, though. So we have our own little, and that's an identical station in Paris. Paris gave it to us. So I'm going to read it. Okay, and so that's now. it. Do you want to see London? Sure, um, yes. Okay. Let's, we go? Uh, get yeah. about, uh, about maybe, maybe 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes tops. You guys want to see London? Yeah. Let's Let's get through oh, London. It's only six o'clock. So well, we got to finish. Eight. We, uh, we got to get a lot of time for questions and rebuttals. So well, there's only about 10 people. <laughs> well, 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 if you, well, we'll go on. Let's, yeah. let's call put up London next. Okay, let's do London. I mean, Charlie, you, how you doing? I think he's okay. We're going to get London here in a second. I got All that. right. We're going to do London also. If I can so find this was the here. first week of the trip was London, and the second week was Paris, Marseille. Give me a minute. I got to pull it up. I, you, you're just seeing my blank screen. I gotta get London here next. I think it's right. That can't tell. Oh, I see London. I see France. I see your underpants. Okay. London well, calling. I pull up my pants. I know I put it over here somewhere. London. Here we go. That's How good. many miles of actual high-speed train wreck? Trackage do they have in France? I would have to go back to that map and measure it. Or go to Google. I and how much is it is real high speed at 200 and the rest is just conventional? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they claim 200, but that's what, for about one mile? No, oh, Paris to Marseille is at least 500 miles. And it was going 200 miles per hour the whole way. Really? Yeah. Was, you know, we were there in two hours. And the <laughs> conventional trains are, are also much faster. They're running at one at, at one twenty-five. I think the Strasbourg one goes to well over two hundred. You, you need the Strasbourg, but even there. Okay, Mike. We're trains, gonna get. We got. All right. Now we're gonna get our high speed here. How much does a ticket cost in comparison <laughs> to the states? It was cheap. It was like 50 bucks, Paris to London. I was shocked. Same when I went to Spain, $50. Okay, Mike, we're ready. Downtown London to down, down, uh, Now, but the damn shuttle was expensive, but I bought the ticket very late. It was like 200 bucks round trip. But like going Paris to Marseille was like 50 bucks. Okay, here, this is the first half of the trip. London, this is going to be just London. We'll have more buses here. The Thames. Yeah, here's downtown London. Here's the stations. 
So they got four or five really nice old historic huge stations in Houston, St. Pancras, King's Cross, where Harry Potter was filmed. And then uh, Victoria, <laughs> Victoria Station, I think it's here. And then they got um, Paddington. Yeah. yeah, the Queen Station, I think. Okay, go ahead. There, now, here's what happened to London after it was bombed by Hitler. So there were bombs everywhere, fire bombs and all that. So the really, okay, so I like this map because, not really okay anyway this map could show where these train stations are so here's Houston station during World War II here's Paddington during World War II uh, here is King's Cross during World War II and then uh, anyway Victoria Station. Those are like the, the big old, you know, famous ones. And then there's a the Liverpool Station, I really like. But anyway, the cities that really burned out, the part of the city that really burned to the ground was all this in black in London. And of course, they saved all the, you know, the castles and the uh, House of Parliament. Sorry about that. And they say it's Westminster. They always say it's the posh part of town. <laughs> and, and let the East End get, get their ass kicked. Right, that's about it. Okay, you're back from Chicago to London to go ahead. So here's Paris, or here's a, you know, so here's my trip, London. Go ahead. Taking a plane, it's in the plane, we got a tractor. And you get off at Heathrow Airport, and then here's their new Elizabeth flight that goes basically. Uh, I didn't take it, but <coughs> why not? Uh, you know, you know, they're a week. <laughs> we can't do everything. Okay. Plus, I had to get my bearings and unpack. That's more money. I'm gonna go with Paris. Go ahead. Here's inside the. Uh, you ever heard of the tube? Yeah. yeah. The underground. This yeah. is inside. It's a little cozy. <laughs> it's smaller than the CTA, but you know, same concept. CTA is still the most awesome. Nice seat. CTA is still the most awesome train. Okay, so here I get off at my my neighborhood where my hotel is, and what's it called? It's called Russell. My buddy Russell. <laughs> I'm like, wow, well, that's pretty wild. Russell Square. Okay, go ahead. Russell Square. Here's their CT. So here's their underground station, Electric Rail, or BD. No extra charge for BD. <laughs> go ahead. Russell Square Station, go ahead. That's the street where my hotel was. So I walked down, the, down that way, and that's where my Russell Station is. Go ahead. And that's St. Panther Station. Look at that train station. Oh my God, right? Okay, I overdid it with too many pictures of St. Panther. But I remember this place from 20 years ago, and I was like, wow, what a station. But Very this nice. is their bullet train. This is their Euro. On all Girl Star Station. That's inside it. So the bullet trains are here. But that's the upper level. Here's your bullet trains, right? Our handsome bullet trains are either going to Amsterdam, Brussels, or Paris. Go ahead. That's an entranceway, that's a street. And that's a CT, that's an underground station. And they have an underground station right about there. It's the hotel, this part. Go ahead. St. Pancras, that's the hotel entrance. I hung out there for hours. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a regional train. So this is all electric again, right? <clears throat> so that is the um, is it Great Western. Yes, but don't go back just as fast as our accelerator. So this is Houston Station where they go out to the west coast of. England. I'll have a map of, of the Great Western Railway. I'll have a map at the end. This is uh, Houston Station, which Russell tells me was bombed. That's their excuse for having an ugly station in London. Go ahead. But it's a busy station. It's the station outside. Go ahead. Anything modern is ugly. Charlie, we got buses for you. You want buses? We got buses. 
That's yeah. a fun day. Yeah. Double decker buses. The front row. <laughs> so yeah, I was on these a few times. Well, those things are scary. Look at the front row, man. Oh my god. Wow. Oh yeah, they take turns. They take curves really fast, and you're like, well, at least Whoa. you get a nice view when you're tipping over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so high. you're up high. Yeah, the stairs are there's stairs on each end, and uh, I would not walk up the stairs while the thing was moving. But these are awesome buses. Hey, Baldy, remember you'd go to another country, you'd be so happy to see a mcdonald's well now you're happy to see all these Aldi. german owned that's why they started well, it's a german company but yeah. they're based in america here i know they are now but that they're in batavia illinois brother-in-law works for them i had a real big, a german company well, he works for all these my biggest batavia. sales a sales consultant is to all the stores for the transportation of uh Ooh. eggs and dairy right Okay, another picture of the back side of St. Pancras. Go ahead. On a, on a bus. That's St. Pancras from St. Pancras and King's Cross stations are right next to each other. Go ahead. That's St. That's King's Cross, Harry Potter Station. All the stations are like within a mile, a mile or two. Not all of them, but four of them. Houston, Paddington, St. Pancras, and King's Cross. Go ahead. This is inside of King's Cross. It's really beautiful, but it was bombed. So here's a regional train. Shh. You guys in the back row. Very nice architecture. Yeah. Yeah, th this is the old station, but, you know, this is uh, decorated for Christmas. And it's kind of like a main lobby or secondary lobby. Lots of retail. I was so impressed at how much retail I was. The train station, but it's a good place to have it. Here's your underground services, subway for London. Go ahead. And that's your underground and tube and other overground rail. Rail and tube service. Yeah, in London. Go ahead. This these pictures didn't come out as well. Go ahead. Oh, they got the Beautiful. It's really nice. It's a little boring, yeah, though, right? Really nice. No. Go ahead. Here's a walkway that I don't think I was supposed to be on. Yeah, I was a little nervous taking pictures of infrastructure with European cops that have assault weapons. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm booked. Because, you know, Europeans probably don't think anything about train stations, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's in America, it's kind of fascinating. Yeah. And terrorists would probably love to have interior pictures of infrastructure, right? Anyway, those are regional trains. That's regional. I think Harry Potter's platform is right here, but you'll see more. Go ahead. I like this. You know what? I used to be anti assault weapons, but now that I see how dangerous America is everywhere right wing, left wing, creeps, mass killings I'm like, we already went down the slippery slope. I just say lock and load. <laughs> okay, so here's the regional trains. This is King's Cross still. Go ahead. There's a regional train. So, so that's right. So automatic. You need to shoot 30 bolts in a row to kill one person. Yeah, back. a bunch of like I mean, no creatures coming in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's bolts a, in a row to kill one suspect. No, what if 50 suspects? Or what if it was mobs? Like we had mobs. Okay. Okay, enough on enough on the assault. Okay, so here's the history of King's Cross. You want to go for all the accessories. Let's get back to the trains. We'll talk about that in a minute. Go ahead. This is the, uh, so here's, this is just a store for Harry Potter. But you know what? If kids get interested in car uh, trains, and, you know, this is the, they're future rail fans, so that's good. Okay, so go, go ahead. That's the Harry Potter store and museum. Go ahead. Five, four, nine, and three quarters. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay, so here it is in St. Pancras on the first floor. Okay, so anyway, these are just regional trains and I took a picture. Here's the Eurostar waiting room and ticket counter. So, you know, this. Okay. My laser. This could burn your foot off. <laughs> I don't think we all have to do Okay, so anyway, here's the Eurostar <coughs> going to Paris and Brussels. Go ahead. And then this is the retail area in St. Pancras. The trains were upstairs, the bullet trains. Go ahead. Ticket counter again. The meeting area is massive. I was like, you know, I was figured a couple hundred people waiting to take a bullet train to the mainland in Europe. And it was like 10,000 people in the waiting room. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's uh, St. Pancras. Another picture here is St. Pancras. Everybody loves these cars. Who makes those, Russ? You got to get one of them. That'll be my new day, day room. Well, it's London. London taxi. Yeah, who makes them? Who makes it? They used to be made by Leyland. Okay, so here is St. Pancras. Go ahead. St. Pancras again. Girl Star, not the best order right here. Go ahead. It's basically the version Go ahead. of a checker. Yeah, checkers were made here. Here's the Chalmers Bill. Yeah. Paris, Brussels, Reynolds, and Amsterdam. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. And that's the checkers here. Okay. Here's the state, here's the uh, underground, electric underground in St. Pancras. Go ahead. There's your handsome bullet trains. Go ahead. Looks like all these stations are stub end. Are what? Are these stations in London all stub in? Yes. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Go ahead. Stub end, which is, they don't have trains going through. Okay, you're in St. Pancras again. St. Pancras again. Uh, I just took a picture because she was here. Company I used to represent. Here's the street. Next to where where I would go for a pub or a breakfast. Go ahead. They, you know it's nice. Boy, it's tough walking around a medieval city. Cause look at these crazy ass streets, man. <laughs> You're used to Chicago with a nice grid, buses walking around. Look at this. Sometimes the streets start start and stop for no reason. I like Boston. Yeah, and like uh, so. It, they do have these signs and maps uh, uh, quite a bit in London. Go ahead. Here's my hotel in London. In the park across the street. Go ahead. Uh, we don't get ticketing stuff. Go ahead. Go ahead. And all the, you guys know this that all the uh, European uh, cigarette packs. Go ahead, Tim. We'll, we'll, you know, we, this slide is for Tim. Go back. One more. So, <laughs> foot cancer, teeth cancer. That's how you buy your cigarettes to wrap it. Lung cancer. When you buy a pack of cigarettes in Europe, you're going to get some ugly, disgusting picture of cancer. How Wrapped much are they? It. How much are they? <laughs> They're the same as here. They're expensive. Same like $17, like you see it downtown. Yeah, just like here. But you get the added benefit of that. You get some disgusting cancer picture wrapped around the whole thing. Yeah. Nanny State, baby. Are those Marlboros? Yeah, they're all there. Okay. All the usual suspects. Go ahead. Well, they have their own brand, too. Yeah, they're all wrapped in something like that. Here's my boarding pass to get on the Eurostar. So I was getting ready to leave London. Go ahead. You know, this is kind of nice, Charlie. This is where I get for you since you're a bus guy. Key, Chicago should have maps like this downtown. Key bus routes in London. So these are like ones that have really good service, you know, five, 10 minute service. So I'm staying up here in Russell Square somewhere in Houston. Uh, I don't think this, this is just bus. So this is the ones that are going to be like, 
24 hours and really good service. You know, all through downtown London, right downtown, Hyde Park, Victoria Station. So this, this is a good map, and you probably should have something like this where people can immediately know which are the good bus lines. Go ahead. City of London is considered the East End. The West End is where, you know, Piccadilly Circus and the Parliament and the Queen. Who else is over here, Russ? You know all that. Uh, no, my the king, the king. I, here's a here's an honorary high speed stone. High speed rail, St. Pancras Station by Her Majesty, 2007. That's in St. Pancras. And here's another one. Charlie, you there? Yeah. Yes. This is kind of cool too. In Chicago, should have it. This is your night buses. For us people that are out late, maps of the buses that run 24 hours uh, from downtown London. I don't think we have anything like that. Yes, but we do. They're called owl service. I know, but do we have maps around downtown? Yes. I was going to ask you, did you get your maps free or did you have to buy them? Uh, actually, I only got like two, three maps. And I looked them up, schedules and maps and timetables. I got a Great Western <coughs> timetable and map. I got an extra one for us. Uh, I got a couple of underground maps, uh, little tiny ones, and something else, maybe. Maybe the Paris Metro, but not much. They don't give out much paper anymore. So those days are over. Ooh. So this is Black Friday. I guess they celebrate <laughs> that in Europe. I don't know what, you know, after Thanksgiving. This is the day after Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, after they celebrate Thanksgiving? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's Black <laughs> Friday in, in London. So <laughs> I guess they celebrate it. Hey, Bargains. Reason for marketing uh, Bargains. Okay, go ahead. See, there's European yeah, smoke. See that lady there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they like smoking. Represents what? I'm not sure. Okay. It's, uh, not quite at the same time, but the first people are still. Yeah, keep going. Okay, now this is kind of interesting. I, I have an interest in acoustic guitars, and I'm walking. Who knows the Rolling Stones here? I know. Okay, so I'm walk. I'm walk. I, I enjoy you know guitar and rock culture and all this, and I'm walking around looking for guitar stores, and I found out there's a whole strip of guitar stores in London, and I'm like, son of a gun. Well, I gotta walk over there, and then there's this dude. Go to the next slide. Outside, okay, this is the hot bob of Goblin store. There's a guy outside this one store. He goes, come on in here. The Stones recorded their first album here. And I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> what, what are the next one? Here I wait. I took a picture of this because please feel free to photograph this. No, no it's, it's okay. It's free. Okay, so this is the uh, I'll get back to this stones. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this guy is standing out here. These were all guitar and music stores, the whole strip. Right. Must have been 10 of them. Very nice. He goes, get in here. The Stones, I'm like, he had your full bowl. The Stones didn't record their first album in here. So I walk in, I see all these Rolling Stones, that really, you know, and then stuff on the, you know, cut off newspapers. And then I do my, you know, fact checking with the fake news. And I'm like, son of a gun, the Stones recorded their first album in there. So I bought all kinds of, you know, picks and bags and, um, you know, stuff. It's so small. Not only did the Stones record their first album in here, the Kinks, Genesis, and Black Sabbath, oh, <laughs> and David Bowie and Elton John lived in the neighborhood. I'm like, oh my God, this is like the center of Black Universe. So, region well, the whole music industry of Europe is really based in London. Well, Black Germany owns Black. But wow. So anyway, 
anyway, go, ahead, the yeah. go ahead to the next one. So yeah, Regent Sounds. And then she worked here. Oh, the smallest store is. Jimmy yeah. Hendrix was recorded in here. Anyway. Okay, so I don't know what that is. I'll bet you some more bus and train maps. Here's to the underground for you people that really love trains. That is Russell. No, that's Lester Square. So they have four rails. One's the ground, right, Russ? This one? The middle one, yes, is the ground. But the four, they use the four rail manufacturing. Here you go, Charlie. We got the subway here. No, the two. The two. And uh, so it's got four rails. Okay, go ahead. And here's Russell Square, which is similar. Go ahead. And that's my view from my hotel room. Not the best view, but what the hell? Price was right. Go ahead. Uh, this is, I think this is Victoria Station. Go ahead. Yeah, this is a nice historic old station. Very busy. Go ahead. Lots of retail. Go ahead. Victoria Station. That's like a new lobby. Go ahead. Look at these people are having tea. Here's the train. <laughs> right next to the train. They're just sitting here having tea. I was on this little restaurant balcony. That's the other part of the station. What are these stations? Go ahead. Uh, my daughter's in the music theater. So here, here's the who's who likes music theater? Uh, well, London, it's not New York. London is the capital of music theater. So look at all these music theater. Joints. London's really the true theater capital of the world. Can we go ahead? Go ahead. Uh, this is Victoria Station. Um, uh, and just overhead emergency map. It's an outdoor. It was at night. It was a little rainy. That's the exterior of Victoria Station. Go ahead. There's the theater district on the way to the store to Victoria. Go ahead. That's another shot of the street here. Piccadilly Circus, the theater. Go ahead. More of that. There is that famous Piccadilly. Was that Leicester Square? The uh, the statue to Eros. Who knows Eros? I have no idea. No Eros. I think he has nothing to do with it. Well, but anyway, that's a famous statue for London. Go ahead. This is a nice sign, Charlie. Look at this. So they have these in every major train station. It shows you how to get to other train stations. Okay, so wait, go back. So I don't remember where I'm at here. Anyway, but it tells you where I'm Houston, and I went to Penn Church, King's Cross, Liverpool Station, Paddington, Victoria, Waterloo is right downtown. He's go to the Chelsea Drugstore and get his prescription pills. Standing where? in line next to Mr. Hicks. What station is that about? Uh, Chelsea Drugstore. Anyway, so that's a nice sign to show up. Go ahead. Why didn't they develop a union station concept? You mean one station to handle everything? Well, we have union stations in the states, and those all appear to be specific to each railroad, I would believe. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, their stations are big and busy. And they go to different parts of the country. They like their just trains. like France. They got trains that one station go to the west, one station goes to the east, south. Same, same thing in London. Here's your well, that doesn't make for good integrated public transit if you have to keep traveling all around town to change trains. Well, you just hop on a bus. They got plenty of buses in the underground. You know, like I said, four of those stations are within a mile or so. Uh, King Cross, St. Pancras, Houston, and uh, Paddington are all within a mile or so. They're not that far. 
Okay. Kind of like downtown Chicago used to be. Go ahead. There's a bus stop in London. Oh, I was lost walking around on medieval streets. There's Russell Square. They got interesting little, little seats at bus stops. You can't really sleep on them, <laughs> but you can read on them. Go ahead. And they're pretty well marked. You know, a little more overkill than CTA. Go ahead. That's from the top deck of a by level bus. Go ahead. That's behind the second level. <clears throat> so that's the uh, double decker bus. So I'm going to have a stairwell here and then down, down there, I guess, is another stairwell. So that, you know, Nice, you know, nice windows. Go ahead. The thing I kind of like about Europe is they put street signs. This is like permanent almost. You know, so on this street, you have a sign for this street. So that's kind of nice that they they uh, screw the uh, street signs right to the side of the building. Go ahead. Each borough would have their own design. There's the stairs, uh, but that's the stairs to the front of the bus. But now we're in Liverpool Station. I really like this station. Big shed. This is the trains that go to the east coast of London. I love uh, England. Go ahead. <coughs> Look at that. It's all, all outdoors. Go ahead. That's the shed. Look at how huge that is. Go ahead. Liverpool Station. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nice old station, big shed, go ahead. All electric, go ahead, go ahead. That's the terminal. Okay, Mike, we're gonna have to wrap this up pretty soon. Okay, we only got a couple more, hold on. Go ahead. Uh, there's the bar in St. Pancras. There's my local fish and chips bar, go ahead. St. Pancras again. That looks like the Kremlin. <laughs> go ahead. Here's another mode, bicycle guy, stylish, along with buses, all sharing this lane. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go there on the front. Go ahead. It's Paddington Station. Go ahead. What time do you think? 7 o'clock. Well, we need, we, we are, have to be out of here by 7.30. Do. Yeah. Go ahead. This is the Great Western. This one okay. goes to the western side of England. That's Paddington Station. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Paddington Station. Another big station. Go ahead. That's another station. Mary uh, Brown, I think it's called. Go ahead. Go ahead. This one's not quite as big, but it's still beautiful. Go ahead. Go ahead. These are all retail sandwiches. Go ahead. Well, this place kicks Starbucks ass in Europe. <laughs> There's like a ton of those and not that many Starbucks. I couldn't like it. Can you make it? Hey, here. See those screen videos. All right. Go ahead. And now we're back at the Eurostar station. Go ahead. Downtown London. Go ahead. Go ahead. King's Cross, St. Pancras. Go ahead. Kids Cross, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Her Majesty dedicating the Euro Channel, the channel, 2014. Go ahead. Look at the size of this waiting room for Euro, Euro stuff. I mean, there must have been two, several thousand people. Go ahead. This is the uh, platform for Eurostar. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's the menu again. Go ahead. That's kind of like the Amtrak. The bullet trains. Go ahead. Who can translate kilometers per hour? About 180, I think. This is kind of the opposite of at 200 miles an hour. Go ahead. And there's a nice, beautiful, handsome Eurostar going to Paris or Brussels. Go ahead. This is a nice hop on, hop off. It's kind of a nice map. Uh, here's the train station here, here, here. See, Charlie, here's the train station here, here. Here, here, and here. 
Like we saw this, we bus routes to service. Okay, here's your best, here's your uh, Great Western, this is a famous map. So this is a, this is your Great Western Railroad. So here's London. And you know, he goes off to Bristol and Brighton and then all these trains go up to the, goes up to the, West Coast of England. There's Chicago. Go back. There's Chicago. Chicago's got a decent looking rail map. That's kind of a different type of map, but it's pretty impressive. It's not quite London or Paris, but you know, it's not bad. Go ahead. Here's an old underground map in London. So here's Russell Square. Wait, here's St. Pancras. Okay. And King's Cross, and here's the Parliament and all that stuff. And now go ahead. And then they straightened up, straightened out this map. I think this is from the 1930s. It is. Did you say that somewhere? No, I just know it from from the development of the map. And it was 33 when that first came out. There was a famous uh, painter who did a famous uh, employee who did that. Yeah, because the last map was more actual. Very map, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's uh, wow. move on. And again, here's our London to Paris, the Marseille map for bullet trains. Again, there's our Europe. Okay, Mike, That's we got to wrap Thank it you. up. Very nice, Mike. Very okay, nice. I'm going to share a screen. Mike, you stay up there. We're going to take um, Because of the amount of time that we've gone in, I, I'm going to limit questions very quickly to about 10 minutes and get into rebuttals. <laughs> Okay, Mike, why don't you get behind the podium there because I'm going to fire a question at you real quick. Okay, I have a question. All right, uh, just give me a second here, okay? Uh, let me get back. Can they stop share? You know, I can do a quick summary of why. No, no, no we're doing question and answer. We're going to do questions yeah, and answer. For yeah, we're doing question and answer now. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> whatever. Okay, Ellen. Um, okay. All right, Ellen, and I'll go to Jake. Okay, did they have dedicated bike lanes? Uh, it's kind of a mixture from what I saw. More, more dedicated in like Spain and France than London. London streets are so narrow. I didn't see a lot of dedicated bike lanes. Like, what do you mean? Like, what's the and, and those... where some boroughs have it and others don't? Probably where the streets are wider, you could put in EV and bike lanes also. I mean, did they have any bike lanes at all? Or in London, I didn't see a whole lot. They yeah. said they do, but. Either certain boroughs do and certain boroughs don't. If they're wider like streets, I could see putting in bike lanes, but sometimes <laughs> these medieval streets are just so narrow. Oh, you can okay. barely get two cars. Yeah. Hey, Mike, you ever go to Amsterdam? You could have made a no. one-way street. I was there in 1972 for 24 hours. Uh, okay, okay. Let's, let's move on. Jake, you got a question? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, can you give us can you give us contact information so we can ask more questions later? That's number one. Number two, number two, you said that there's a high speed rail uh, line that goes from London to Marseille. How do they get there? Is there a tunnel? And number three, and number three, quickly on the eastern in the eastern part of France is heavily along the Swiss border is heavily mountainous. It's the Swiss Alps. How do they deal with the mountains? Tunnels. Tunnels. And with cold weather. And with cold weather. Yeah. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Speak into the microphone. Yes, he's speaking. Um, to get from London to Paris, you take the shuttle, and then you got to change great stations in Paris, and then get on the Charlie uh, Old down to Marseille. Okay. So it's two trains to get to Marseille. Okay. What about the mountains? Uh, you go to tunnels where it makes sense. Okay. Do you have contact information so we can get a hold of you later? I'll give that to you before the end of the thing, US Jake. Bullet train. Just US Bullet Train at gmail.com. US Bullet Train. Say again, what? US Bullet Train at gmail.com. That's Mike Lehman's email. Uh, okay, all right. Okay. 
All right, thank you. All right, who's next? Okay, get your question out. We're gonna go quick. Wait, wait, we do we do have a comment period. Yeah, but, but we're not in the comment period. We're in the question and answer period. Let him go. Just go ahead. Okay, in Amsterdam, you get up in the morning and you look outside, and there's thousands of people who are bicycles, painters, doctors, lawyers. They must have what is it? I'm not in 1972. They must have wide streets in Amsterdam. And they, they all ride their bicycles to work. I'm going to guess they have nice, well, wide streets. And plus, they have more of a bike culture. Always have it. Yeah. Oh, you like bicycles? Yeah, they're all right. You know, <laughs> Just be careful. There's a lot of drunk drivers out there. Well, a lot of, I bet you a lot of Amsterdam doesn't have to straight on the sidewalk like me. Well, in Amsterdam, you've got to worry about drunk drivers. There's a lot of us drunks out there. There's been basically in the red light. There's a lot of drunks out there. Okay, guys, let's move on. Okay, next question. Mike, have you ever heard of something called uh, the, 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 the train development in Florida? I think it's called Bright Star. Brightline. Oh, yeah. Brightline, yeah. It's kind of like. I mean, do you think that's because I know they're talking about expanding service yeah, between Los Angeles and, and uh, all right, all right, <laughs> Not, it's, it's like Amtrak. I mean, there's no train service from Los Angeles to Las Vegas right now, right? They're building a route for it, I think. Yeah. And then Las Vegas is one of the largest cities in America that doesn't have Amtrak trucks. Don't they? Don't they have like a, a tram or something? And uh, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, somewhere else. Any other questions tonight for uh Jonathan. okay Jonathan go ahead up to American cities did you feel safe thousand percent more safe at least a thousand how I did, how I did that work on games how, how did it feel huh? what, what did it feel like to be in an area where you felt genuinely safe? It's just liberating. It's just like freedom. I feel completely unsafe in America. Did you feel like when you were out and about, you actually enjoyed it? Yes. Nobody has guns. Your mind was at rest. Yes. Cops had assault weapons. <laughs> I, you know, no gangs, no... That sounds wonderful. Oh, it is wonderful. <laughs> no gangs? No gangs, no thugs. No not that, that's not the... Which, the... which place are you talking about? No gangs? Marseille, Arizona. That's where I was. And then wow. Spain the same way. Valencia, Alcante, Benito. So, uh, so Marseille, Marseille. That's the French connection. I know, but that was, so that was you, a decades ago. The French connection. Based on your experience in trips, would you suggest families go to these places even at night? Yeah, especially Marseille. I mean, Paris is more of a, you know, Paris is like Chicago. It's like, you know, they got the five or six really cool things to see. And, you know, well, Chicago's actually better because it's got beaches and parks and stuff like that. Paris has got just the waterfront. It's got great architecture everywhere. Yeah, no question. But who's got the better looking woman, Paris or London? The better what? The better looking women, Paris or London. Come on now, this is stupid. No, it's not. Come on, we gotta have legitimate questions, Tim. Don't <laughs> dump down the college. We work fat people in Europe, and I'm going, but they use transit because <laughs> they're walking their ass. walkers. Yeah. All right, I have a legitimate question. Are, yeah. the, are these private private railroad op passenger operations, or are they government operated and built? Who, what's the historic, who's operating them, the government or private sector companies? Well, like I showed you uh, in France, the bullet trains, the TGV is public, and then they also, uh, you know, contract out for some private operators. Routes. 
you know, it's on the government in infrastructure. But I took I took the uh, private company uh, one time, and then I took the, the government. Yeah, can't, 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 can't really tell the difference. It's my understanding that the in France the government owns the trackage and maintains it, and then they contract out for the train sets. Yeah, well, not all. So, so the TGB, the the you know the namesake TGB, just the government trains that use it, and then they also contract out to uh, private companies, Legal or Legal or whatever else. They do both. Okay. Um, what do you think the future? Uh, do you think America will ever see high speed rail? Well, they need a bullet train from Chicago to New York, of course. And that would be cool. Chicago, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Philly, New York City. It would connect one other. It would be just as fast as there. And if it burns, Zero oil. <laughs> Once we okay. get thorium online. Yeah, I know. Okay, what, what about renewables? What, are any of this hey, renewables? When, of someday electricity is going to be made by everything. <laughs> in nuclear. 90% nuclear. nuclear in France. Okay, and what about um, geothermal will be the future? I mean, I mean, sorry, what, what about the UK? <laughs> You pays no, about thirty to forty percent. Not like France is. No, I mean, are they? Are they There's going to be so many different ways to make electricity. Wind, um, yeah, and they also do some up in the north, Scotland. They do some of that hydro wind. Hydro. So all of the above strategy for yeah. them. When we're dead and gone, there's going to be so many different ways to make electricity. But oil, 75% of oil is used for cars, airplanes, trucks, things like that. Oil will never reproduce itself. It is non, hugely non-renewable. Electricity, you could have thousands of years of electricity. So we will be fighting oil wars for hundreds of years. So why aren't they using thorium? <laughs> right. Well, why aren't they putting in electric rail systems? And batteries are not the uh, answer either. You know, batteries, there's issues with batteries. So you got, All right. three, um, you got three choices. You either burn up every gallon of oil. You burn every kernel of corn in the world for gasoline, or you put in better transportation systems, electric, you know, connected contaminary. You burn top of oil, possible, burn up the earth, whatever, or you burn up better transportation systems. There are a lot of choices. Michael, I want to ask you a prediction if you want to make. I wonder how many years will it take for us, the American people, to attain the intellectual maturity of the Europeans and the Asians uh, except the 200 mile train? China built their system in 5,000 miles. China built it in 10 years. Yeah. Boom. Boom. All I want is 500 miles from Chicago to Harrisburg. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and you, know, you know who controls know. America. You know, America is very, very, very corrupt. It's corrupt by the bigs. The big oils, the big aviation, the big car, the big road, the okay. big media. Name it. And they want you using their products. Okay. They don't want you to use it all like this. Okay. All right, Mike, we're going to have to go to uh, rebuttals now because it's 7 o'clock. Okay. You'll get the last word. Who wants to rebut tonight? I know Charlie's got one. You guys on Zoom, who wants to rebut tonight? Um, Janice, I know I got it. Okay, I'm going to speak a little bit about, you know. Uh, 
you know, I, I know you guys are fascinated by trains and uh, infrastructure, but one thing I got to tell you is that um, if you go to YouTube and several of the other channels, there are a whole series of documentaries on the train, the, the tube, everything else. The funny thing is, the tube was designed by the very guy who designed uh, our own Chicago L system, a guy by the name of Charles Gertens. They ran him out of town on a rail because of his corruption, and then he moved to London to design their tubes. <laughs> Of course. So you know, Chicago, guy, Chicago was a uh, was a uh, it does produce some good businessmen and good economists too. But anyway, I want to tell you, um, I looked at it and there's uh, several things you can get, find online. If you really want to know about the tube and about you know the British Rail, you can you can just Google them and you'll find a series. It was one I watched uh, about a year or two ago. It was all about the uh, London Underground and people who worked there. It was just called The Tube. And they did like a 10 episode series on it. There was another one they did, it's also produced by the BBC, was uh, the uh, railways in uh, Britain. And he, uh, there was one that was also done in India, it was called The World's Busiest Railway. It was done by the BBC, it went over all the Indian railways, which is far busier than any system in the world. It was called the world's busiest railway. It was a four-night BBC documentary. But anyway, too, there's also several people who uh, do nothing but uh, travel by train. I know that you can find anything on Amtrak. There's a guy, his name is Javid Chimid. He does a good job on his YouTube channel of traveling by train all over Amtrak in the USA. He's done a few of them in Europe and in <coughs> South America, and it's Surprisingly professionally done. I mean, when somebody was a really good at this stuff. And one of my favorites that I've watched over the years is uh, there's a guy by the name of Hobo B. He's, he's a hobo. He's got a YouTube channel. And he uses a cell phone to upload his videos. And he talks about freight hopping. <coughs> and he, he's, uh, he's up and all over the country. He's done 30 minutes of how to, hop a how to hop a freight train from here to here, and he knows the rail structure in, in the United States. Um, what I'm simply saying is that if you're really looking to get into some of these uh, train documentaries and some of the things like uh, Jake, I'm surprised you don't know about the uh, Channel Tunnel, because there's also a new one going across from Germany to I think the Netherlands. No, it's from Germany to Denmark. Yeah, Germany to Denmark. Yeah, you got it. Correct. That little step. What's that street called? I forget the name, but I saw that one. Yeah. Uh, 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 it's, it's, you know, yeah. Go ahead. How much time does it take from the town from England to France? How much time? It takes it? about what? 45 well, minutes, I think. 90 it's minutes from. It's only 200 miles. Yeah. yeah. And they just go right on the ground. And the whole. Documentary. There's a whole documentary on how they and how. Did Tim freeze up? Everything's frozen. Looks like he's logging back on right now.
So he went on for quite a while, it seemed like. Yeah, it's uh, 7 o'clock. 706. <laughs> Hey guys, we got disconnected. My apologies. Well, what else do we have to do? Hey, well, what we're gonna do? Right, hey, Who else has got a rebuttal? Charlie, you got a rebuttal? Well, I sleep my lawyer along. Yeah, but I'd like to have some quiet, please. Let's be courteous of one another. I don't have. I don't have a rebuttal. I just want to let you all know who know Tom Barry that he's in the hospital here in Dallas, taken today by Susan. He is very, very dehydrated. And they're admitting him, and he also has a kidney stone. And I told you all, I told him I would let the College of Chicago know about him. All right. Thank you. Okay. She's up. I got somebody yelling at me about. All right. We'll get this changed real quick. Did Charlie have a question? No. So I got somebody who's complaining that my name's there on the computer. It was Janice. All right. We got live at Dappers. Okay. Um, all right. Anyway, we're uh, okay. You know, uh, to, yeah. Well, anyway, the thing is, is that you know we got some. We got we got everybody worried about it. Janice, you want to say anything? <laughs> no, thank you, though. Well, we'll try to keep it from live at Dappers because I don't. You know, it, it is a live feed. All right. Who else, Kelvin? Anything or anybody? Anybody else want to say anything from uh from uh the peanut gallery out in Zoom land? If not, we'll get back to our rebuttals here. I got to, what, I, I, am I recognized or not? I, I okay. you're recognized, Charlie. Go ahead. A little confusing here. Uh. Well, I, we just we just had a network fry out on us here at the. We just had our, our network go down for a brief minute. That's all that happened. All right. I. Started. So go ahead and do your rebuttal, Charlie. You got about six, seven All minutes. Right. I think we'd like to thank uh, Mike for putting together a nice tour of uh, our European uh, rail networks. Um, I'll be eclectic as usual here. Uh, the a lot of questions here is why do we not have high speed networks here in the States? uh as we do uh, as they have in europe and there are many factors uh when you put these things in you use existing lines they have to be straight they cannot have uh you cannot have crossing gates uh they have to be you have to have overpasses and underpass all along the line so there's infrastructure that determines the feasibility of where you can put a route and where you cannot. I think one of the other things is that uh, a lot of the infrastructure already existed for suitable for high-speed rail in these locations. Uh, perhaps in France, they didn't uh, with some of the extensions, but uh, the infrastructure was suitable. In the United States, it it's, depends on what you're talking about. Also in the United States, we cover great greater distances and we do not have the population density. If you operate 
a system like this, you have ridership projections. Um, also, you have to have a network of railroads. Now, in some places, he was talking about in Florida, you have these point A to point B, or in Texas, they're talking about those. Those are more like commuter lines or shuttle lines. And I don't know if they qualify as, if they don't, if they're isolated uh, systems, they aren't a real great travel value. Uh, that's why I was asking. They call it integrated transit. Uh, apparently, historically in, in London, for example, it appears that in England had something like 13 rail, major rail line, passenger lines. Uh, and they didn't get together uh, and establish Union stations. Now, he says, oh, you only have to go a mile. Well, people have luggage and so forth and children. Uh, what you want to have people, if you want to change trains, you want to be able to just cross platforms, if at all. And very often that is accomplished for you. So that's called seamless transportation. So it is an impediment. There's historical differences. Now, the other thing about England is the conservatives came in and the rail network of Great Britain was uh, premier of the world. The first trains were developed there and they built engines for the colonies. Um, the conservatives came in and privatized the networks and it turned into a disaster. And the once premier rail network of the world or one of them turned into a sad, sad situation. They've restored these back to uh, government operation. And that's why you're able to see this uh, high speed trains in operation. So those of you that think that uh, the government cannot do things, uh, what you saw tonight were in fact government operations, both in Great Britain and France. So that puts that out of there. Um, that's what I mean, you have national, nationally operated passenger services and private sector. Um, the uh, Another thing is about people may not realize that in the city of Chicago itself, we were the rail capital and we at one time did have six stations in operation. Um, and multi, every rail line, but you could connect here and travel anywhere within the country. Um, they actually had a service. It was part of your ticket price that they transferred between the stations so that if you needed them transfer stations, you simply, they had vehicles uh, much like taxi cabs or limo services and you could transfer among trains. The thing about this, you have to realize that high-speed rail is electrified. And you didn't show it a great deal because, but you need catenary. It's enormously expensive infrastructure and it has to be maintained. Um, every single night in Japan, for example, their bullet trains, they have 600 employees who work on the maintenance of way. And there is an expense. The last truly electrified line in the United States, however, was built only in something like 1934, the Pennsylvania Railroad. So yeah, we are quite conceivably behind the rest of the world in this regard. However, there's so many variables that go into this cause and effect and so forth. Um, the United States government, he was hitting on it. There's still a large, and I lectured on this, the large extent of car culture. And he was saying that he conveyed there, he alluded to the fact that the Europeans apparently we're not of that mindset. And I don't know if we're there yet either. But anyhow, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Come again. All right, Andy, go ahead. Hey, can everybody hear me okay?
Yeah, I think they can. The, the black. No, the, that 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 might. Does the other one work? Yeah, yeah, it works. I can talk in the How's that? Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Um, no, can't hear you. You gotta speak a little louder. Okay, how's that? That's better. But not, not real good. <laughs> we just gotta talk a little louder. Oh, wow. Talk a little louder. Anyway, use that. Use that one on the podium. The yeah. lower one. Pick it up. The one on the podium. Just pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody in the room can hear me, so I, I guess you guys are back. This is a, Mike gave a great talk. I'd like to add, stress a couple of things about worldwide electricity. Um, one of the Wall Street investments that are being hawked right now by smart investors that say get in on the ground floor like before Apple or before Google became large or before Tesla became large. You can get in on the ground floor and make a bundle if you invest in something called SWAB, S-W-A-B, that's what they're calling it. That means solar, wind, and batteries. New industrial sites for batteries to back up a large power plant are being put online around the world. Solar, wind, coupled with batteries, Give a utility can provide 24 hour uninterrupted electricity. It's cheaper than coal, oil, gas, or nuclear. That's one thing. Number two, log on to Rocky Mountain Institute and look at their section. It's talking about the electrification of trucks in the United States. They say the trucks that deliver everything that we have, trucks that have a, a daily route under 200 miles a day are going electric now. Several companies have been buying electric trucks and uh, experimenting with them since 2017. 2017, 19, 20, no, 23. It's called um, Drive for Less, I think, something like that. But it's drivers of these trucks look like regular semi trucks. They once you drive one of these electrics, you want to go back to the diesel. And they're a lot cheaper per mile for the company that owns them to deliver freight than diesel trucks are. This is not something that's pie in the sky in the future. They're here now. Yeah, bus line. The third thing, Harvey Wasserman wrote an article that showed up on uh, with Tom Green about the closing down of reactors in the United States. So the only way nuclear reactors can be kept open in the United States is Popped up with welfare money from the taxpayers. They can't compete with solar and wind for uh, the price per kilowatt. So, also, they're being propped up by driving and safety efficiency not forcing the shutdown because of human fights and all kinds of other radioactive agents and conditions that cause the nuclear accident. So, the nuclear industry is on the way out. Fourth thing, the last thing I'll talk about, I forget whether it was Stanford or Columbia, I have to look up the article. It's two days ago, some university did an in depth study. SMR, small modular reactors. That's um, yes. They, used they did a study, in depth study on all the different effects. <clears throat> pound for pound, the new small reactors produce more radioactive. Waste that the big ones have got now. But what also, pound for pound, these smaller reactors going from one point and they're estimating to produce a kilowatt. The cost per kilowatt for the consumer will be at least, at least 10 times the cost of solar and wind power. Let's say that again. The study showed that if, if these new nuclear reactors will be built with welfare money. Taxpayers. They're not financed by private companies that make a profit, like Edison and California Edison. And There's no way a utility can make money with a small tax to sell a kilowatt. They're, they're going to be part of the military industrial complex proposed to make nuclear weapons. That's what it's all about. Going with all the machinery to tell people, well, it's for our new generation. So, 
takes at least 10 years to get a reactor online after it hits the tank. The other thing, the most optimistic, the most optimistic estimates of the small modular reactors that they were built all over the world would contribute about 2% of the electricity industry. So carbon free at point fifty make it dead what's called climate change and global warming. It's well welfare for the companies that make it. And, uh, it's a dead end. As I said five, 10, 15 years ago, not only does nuclear power not have the ability to solve the greenhouse or the climate crisis, nuclear power is the climate crisis in terms of sucking money away from all the other cheap things that are 10, 15, 20 times, 50 times cheaper than cutting down and burning the fossil fuel energy. So also, did anybody see the news that Ford has made a deal with Tesla so that Ford's electric cars can clog on Tesla's charging station nationwide? That was reported on the news today. The country is going all electric. There's no question about it. You had a No, I saw that. You saw it. Okay, so that's that's all I wanted to add. Major media doesn't tell us how fast, how big the electrification and the conversion of solar and wind power okay. and solar, wind, and battery from the utilities that are putting in big installations now, and they can shut down the coal and all of the nukes. You know, it's just cheaper okay. to shut down a nuke than use the button now with the alternative. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Janice, you got your hand up. Let's go ahead. You got a question? I don't know. I think she's ready to rebut. Go ahead, Janet. Um, thank you. Um, okay, is the speaker done? Yes. Andy, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I uh, because of this uh, speaker, um, I would uh, like to let everybody know that we have to tear up these this cement because you know we have big rain events and the water pools instead of going into the earth underneath um and we need those tracks back uh so we can have electrified um public transportation that goes everywhere in the city um uh because these buses you know that gm forced city fathers to do you know way back when um, our, our ghost, bu ghost buses now, they don't come, or if they come, you know, it's an hour later or something. Um, so I think we need to demand of city fathers, uh, number one, uh, we need cement that breathes, you know, that you, so water can seep through it instead of pool on it. And secondly, sure. we need uh, tran uh, transit that runs on electricity uh, like the trams used to do uh, and maybe put the tracks back in. Uh, so we need to uh, get our voices to do that. And also Europe, um, you were speaking of what Europe has, Charles. Um, uh, uh, Europe has the preventive policy. We have, hey, kill a hundred babies first uh, regarding small batteries, and then maybe we'll look at it. Uh, yeah. You know, that's our system. Uh, I'm gonna go next. <laughs> and um, uh, in the 2009 book, The Healing of America by T.R. Reed, um, he talks about uh, public uh, um, uh, talks about universal health in your in almost all the European countries and, and some in Asia uh, and says uh, that the United States health care is just like the Indian health care if you have a, money you get the best of care you get Ayurvedic care um, uh, but something that the European doctors have they don't have TVs or magazines but they have a sign that says what things cost You'll never find that in the United States doctor's offices. Uh, we need universal health care. Um, and uh, one final thing is uh, HR 598, Charles has been promoting this, 
uh, the Earth Act. We need everybody's representative to get on board to HR 598. That is the Earth Act to stop climate pollution by 2030. Since uh, it hasn't been passed yet, it probably will be after 2030, but it will get us three things. 100% universal um, energy, 100% regenerative agriculture instead of kill the earth agriculture that we have now, and 100% universe uh, um, uh, non-fossil fuel vehicles. Um, so get your representative in the U.S. House, not the Illinois, but the U.S. House, uh, to co-sponsor this bill. I've been calling Sean Cast uh, many, many times to do that. Um, so thank you. All right, Mike, we're going to wrap it up and uh, go ahead. Uh, maybe 20 minutes at tops. Well, you know, don't go the full 20, but, you know, okay. just go ahead and wrap yourself up. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. The reasons for electric bullet trains, electric rail, uh, are a few, few really important ones. Uh, <clears throat> let me point out that 50,000 people die of bullets every year in America. Less than 10 people, 10 passengers die in trains and buses every year. How many died in the year, Sean? 50,000. 60? 50. 50,000. A lot of idiots. Uh, less than 10 people die as bus passengers and train passengers. It's very safe in those years. Pollutions, you know, aviation, they try to say that they're only like 3 or 4% of total pollutions, but they're. <laughs> They pump out car lots of carcinogens in there. They have no emissions controls at all. Uh, at all, they huh. greenwash all their commercials. I remember a commercial about two, three years ago. They said they're going to be running jet fuel on bananas, banana peels. Uh, uh, uh. Um, climate change, whether you believe it or not, or most people do nowadays. I jet fuel has a lot to do with that. With the with the Frost and with the uh, water vapors that come out of uh, burning jet fuel. Uh, another reason for uh, bullet trains is congestion. You know, it takes away from uh, car traffic. Gets people out moving. Well, Europeans seem like they were in much better shape. We always had a good shape. Charlie's in. He's always walking and drinking his buses, even while smoking. But, um, uh, you know, in America, only 50% of the people drive. Once you get to, I, I'm pretty primarily on bike, bus, walking, trains nowadays. I don't, my car, I don't really have a nice car. I don't drive. You know, 50% of Americans don't drive. When you're under 18 or 20, my daughter didn't start driving until she was 19. So that's a big chunk of the population under 20. Think about that. And then you get people 70, 80, 90. They're not driving a whole lot anymore. So it's only really four people 20 to about 60, 70 years old that are big users of driving. So better transportation systems necessary for the young, schools, elderly, disabled, of course. Half, it's almost half the population. Um, uh, what else did I want to, you know, it, it's funny because America's half of the population of America is in the 1950s. America's twice as big population-wise now as it was in the 1950s. In the 1950s, with stupid decisions, most of our passenger rail systems were destroyed. Not most of them, a lot of them. Passenger rail systems were destroyed. Chicago had three or four really excellent systems that should be in use today, right? North Shore, the CA and E, the Chicago Roar and Elgin. Several Cut eight. down on the typing sound. Don't worry, uh, Charlie. Next him again. Charlie, talk, talk right, louder. I'm almost done here. Um, 
We felt we, we spent trillions of dollars with George Bush and Cheney and Albert fighting oil wars. So oil wars are gonna be keep on dumb. And that's 75% of oil is for transportation, cars and uh, airlines. Charlie, I wanted to uh, uh, respond to your allegations that we have a big country, we don't have the density. Nobody really lives between the Mississippi River and the Deep Blue. California, California and the West Coast is pretty well populated. But if you go inland from there, there aren't a whole lot of people. America is a whole different story between Chicago and New York. So yeah, it's a big country, but once you get past the Mississippi, it's farms, deserts, mountains, farms, deserts, mountains. There isn't much out there as far as people that use transportation. Um, you know, yeah, initially electric uh, infrastructure is expensive, but you know, it's not that hard to maintain what's in the place. Um, and then lastly, I just want to say we got to use electric rail and electric transportation because uh, eventually we're going to have a reckoning with the oil, whether it's pollution or climate change or wars or what have you, or running out of oil. And uh, once we're gone, you know, lots of other ways are going to be available to make electricity or geothermal. The, sun, the center of the earth is as hot as the sun. Think about that for a minute. All hmm. powered by thorium and the decay of uranium. Yeah. That's what's burning up, right? Uranium? Yeah, yeah the decay of thorium and uranium. That's what produces most of the heat for the mantle yeah. of the earth. I mean, that's, that's you know, there's going to be electricity coming. Anyway, thanks, Tim, Charlie, and everybody else. The big crowd. <laughs> the crowd. Well, sure. the lawyer. You want to adjourn us tonight square. after we're done? What? Adjourn us tonight. Who's my hero, Michael? You know, he's Adjour my get up there, Russell. Adjourn. Adjourn. No, go up to the mics and adjourn us out. My lawyer. Wish everybody a good week and. Uh, happy Memorial Day. Happy, happy Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. No more oil yeah, don't wars. Say happy Memorial Day. You say happy holidays, Christmas, you have Thanksgiving, Memorial Day, you say have a meaningful, have a meaningful. I like it. I you like it. Okay, Ross, go ahead. You don't have a happy day with your dad. Adjourn us. <laughs> We're adjourned. And happy decoration day. <laughs>